We all like to be the popular guy at parties, the one everyone leaves talking about. Whether it's because you are the best at beer pong, can nail some sick dance moves, or you pretend to sound smart by using info you got off a random YouTube video. Of course, I can do all three, but for you, let's not try to run before we can moonwalk, eh? I'm Adam Wilborn from What Culture, and these are eight science facts to make you sound clever at parties. Number eight, the Earth actually orbits the moon. Mind blown. And we're only on number eight. The standard model that most people have in their heads is that the moon orbits the Earth, the Earth orbits the sun, and everything is moving in a lovely, orderly manner. But you could technically say that the Earth is orbiting the moon just as much as it is orbiting us due to the fact that the moon has its own gravity that acts on the Earth. After dropping your nice paradoxical sounding soundbite, you should follow up with, well, more accurately, they both orbit a common point. This common point is what is known as the barycenter. It is the center of mass between two orbiting objects. When one object is more massive than the other, like me and Cleary, the barycenter will be located within it, but not at its very center. This is what happens with the Earth and the Moon. The Moon is much smaller, but its gravity still affects the Earth, causing the Earth to appear to wobble as it orbits a point just below its surface. Number seven. Technically, serotonin and dopamine are the only two things you enjoy. Our levels of happiness, excitement, and contentment are all based on the levels of these two chemicals, serotonin and dopamine, in our bodies. Dopamine is the main driver behind our feelings of desire and has a major role in the brain's reward systems, allowing us to feel gratification and enjoyment. Serotonin is dopamine's more serious, older cousin and is thought to be responsible for balancing our moods. So the next time you're enjoying yourself, you can thank those plucky little neurotransmitters. Number six, your blood won't actually boil in space. The idea that your blood will boil if you're exposed to the vacuum of space comes from the principle that the boiling point of a liquid is lower at lower atmospheric pressure. This is also the same reason you can't ever make a good cup of tea on a plane. Hey, guys. Guys? Guys? The atmospheric pressure in outer space is nil, so surely this would make the blood boil instantly. Well, no. The thing is, unless you have a gaping wound, your circulatory system is completely sealed and pressurized. This pressure will keep the blood in its liquid state in much the same way atmospheric pressure keeps water liquid on the Earth's surface. Science! Number five, your head is technically older than your feet. Whoa, that's deep, man gravitational time dilation. It's a part of Einstein's theory of relativity, but we all knew that, right? And it means that the speed at which time passes is relative to the distance it is from a gravitating mass. Basically, the stronger the gravity, the slower the time. The closer you are to a massive object, the more space-time is bent, and the further light has to travel between two fixed points. But in order for speed of light to remain constant, it's time that has to run slower in order to allow the light to catch up. I'll give you a second to let all that sink in. Number four, a black hole won't actually suck you in. A black hole under normal circumstances is no more likely to suck you into its inky abyss as it is to perform a bloody tap dance. In fact, the sun could turn into a black hole right now, and apart from being suddenly plunged into a dark and eternal winter, or as it's known around here, Scotland, nothing would change. This is because a black hole still has the same mass as the object that formed it. It's just condensed into an infinitesimally small point called a singularity. This means that objects can happily orbit a black hole for its entire lifespan without being sucked in so long as they stay away from the event horizon. No! Number three, people in space aren't floating, they're falling. People in orbit around the Earth aren't beyond the reaches of gravity, and that is not the reason why they float around the station. In the words of the great Buzz Lightyear, they're simply falling with style. A more accurate way to explain it would be that the astronauts and the space station et al. are actually constantly falling towards the Earth and missing it. This is because the ship is traveling past the Earth as quickly as it's falling towards it, and so simply falls around the edge and remains in orbit. Number two, blind people don't see blackness, they see nothing. 
It's tempting for us sighted folk to assume that blind people are plunged into a world of darkness. But this is coming from our very visually based brains. We're so dependent on visual stimuli that we cannot simply imagine its absence, replacing it instead with our idea of black. Blind people have never seen black and so don't know what it looks like, just like if you were asked to imagine a completely new color. <laughs> Number 1. Of course, Schrodinger's cat was meant as a joke. One of the best ways of making yourself look clever is by making somebody else look stupid. For example... Hey Cleary, what's that? Hey! Oh God! You can easily do this with Schrodinger's cat, a famous thought experiment that often gets brought up by smug people at parties. God, I hate you! They'll probably talk about how the cat is both alive and dead at the same time. They might even start chucking words around such as superposition and quantum probability. And then they'll sit back, safe in the knowledge that they've just blown all of your minds. Well, this is the point where you should drop in with, yeah, but it's not actually real. Schrodinger was just joking and watch their face fall. Suck it, science! The truth about this famous thought experiment is that Schrodinger was actually just being a snarky git. He came up with the whole idea of a dead, alive cat in a box to highlight the absurdity of quantum mechanics. Of course, the cat isn't simultaneously alive and dead. It's either definitely dead or alive and pissed off at you for shutting it in a box.